Hello, guys. How are you doing? Now, now, now here, now here, the, 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 the this is where the, the impulsive, overconfident Hans Niemann comes out. <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm going to be analyzing my games. The game I need to analyze is... Uh, Aaron, the first game is against the Grandmaster. Okay guys, so the game, I was black. Did anyone see the final results? I only won like 300 bucks. Not, it's not that only, but um... I, I, had, I had a really tough opposition. So I won $300. Which is not that bad. Okay anyways, so the game goes E45. Not f3, knight c6. This was online, it wasn't rated. No, he plays bishop b5. Okay. Anyone, so I, I go for this. Um, bishop a4. Knight f6, castles. b5 here, b, bishop b7, all theory. Anyone know what the uh, main move is here? C, no, uh, Ricky one's the main move. And then d6, c, uh, d6. C3, castles H3, and like knight A5, C5 is the main move. Anyways, this has been around for a while. He plays D3, and now I play D, yo, thanks for the prime. I play D6, and now he plays an early A4. What's the idea of A4, guys? What's the, uh, what's the threat? A, B, right? We have a pin. So there's a, uh, there's a few ways I can defend this, right? So I could maybe, I can move my bishop anywhere to connect the queen and rook or it could actually move the rook to prevent the bin what move would you guys play here well actually i have a question why would this be a bad move um from a structural standpoint open a file for the rook half open good isolated pawn great 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 we have now disconnected the uh the pawn island i'm still in uh i'm still in theory here i have all this memorized knight d2 rook e8 rook e1 bishop f8 Okay, in this position here, white to play. What's a, what's a nice idea? Sorry. So white to play, what do you guys think here? Uh, give me some uh, Canada moves. So the idea, what about A takes B5? What, what's an interesting move here? Well, if I take, right? If they get the bishop pair, and this light square bishop is going to be, could be really strong. Potentially with some weaknesses. Um... So, obviously I'm not going to allow that, I went here. But now my pawns get doubled. What do you guys think about my pawns being doubled here? So, so, do you think my king is going to be too weak now? Or, or what? It's fine. So, so, so there's, this is an interesting dynamic here. So, let's put this pawn on, on, back on g7. Let's transport this pawn from f7, g7. Do you, who do you think is better in that in that position? Who do you think is better? If the pawn just teleports to g7, who do you like better, white or black? In a positional sense, black is better because the because you're going to take control of the d file, and then you're going to bring your queen in, and you've got more space in the queen side. You're going to push your pawn, to, and you could create some weaknesses. So there's going to be some queen side play. So if the, if there's no king side thing to worry about, black would just be better. So you play bishop d1, h4, bishop g4. Do we think this is a good or bad move? Okay, so he is trading off my best piece. He is trading off my best piece, right? That's a good point. However, sometimes you let your guard down. And suddenly, I'm going to transfer all my pieces to the attack. How do I start transferring my pieces to the attack of the king side? Now, let's try to look at the... Uh, Let's look. What color are all of these pawns on? You should say the answer right. White, right? And what color are my, all of my pawns on? How might we... We So that means... Where do you want to play? Yo, Bean, thank you for the five months. So guys, where do we think that I should be trying to focus my play on? On the light squares or the dark squares? I do have a bet, but, but let's say I trade off these dark squared bishops. What's going to happen to my opponent's dark squares once his bishop is traded off? I play the move rook to d3. And now, he plays c4, putting yet another pawn in the light square, weakening all sorts of dark squares. How do I build up the pressure? Play the move queen to d7. 
what's the th- what's not there's not a direct threat but you know you guys got the sacrificial idea right knight plays queen c2 and now i played the winning move but i uh, i fail I, I i blundered at the end unfortunately you guys mentioned earlier rook takes e3 right but let's do some calculation okay this is where maybe i calculate so rook takes e3 rook takes e3 Canada moves what are the Canada moves there chat now, in this position, queen d4, what are the moves white can play? Canada moves. You can go knight f1 to defend the rook. You can go queen d3 to defend the rook. You can go king f2 to defend the rook. We can say those are pretty plausible, right? So let's say take takes here. Which, what would you play here as black to defend? Queen d3, okay. Well, then, okay, queen d3 is the best move. Knight f1, that you just go here. And um, like, let's say king f2, you're kind of in a bind. So queen d3 is forced. And now a key move I was calculating was with bishop h6. Allowing the queen trade, and after takes, you take this way. Because if you take this way, you allow a, a pass pawn. And now if, the, if this goes here, now how does, how does black win? Knight e5, right? And now this rook it has only one square, and then you win the knight. And now the rook's actually trapped, and you're just going to win the game very easily. However, you must also consider the move rook to e2. And I spent quite some time calculating this variation. And now I need yet another follow-up. So the idea, let's say you go knight f1, then I go bishop here. And now, it's a, it's a, it's a zugzwang, right? So the point is, is that you have to go king f1. Now if knight f4, then you go king here, and then you go knight f1. And it's really annoying that white's position is just so solid. And my pawn on d3 is actually overextended. I'd like to move it back. And I could even start to lose this game. Um, because if I'm not winning, um, because the next move is knight f1, and I'm looking, so like, let's say I go king g7, right? Knight f1. I could still think to go bishop d4, and I still have a bind. But let's say after rook d2 g3 is coming and again if i don't have a breakthrough I, I, I could i could risk losing so i looked at i looked at um you know not not a four but not a four rig d2 here just not f1 and i thought this was a draw or no here just um I'm not sure what i thought here but it was a draw from what i remember I am not winning on the spot, but look what I have. I have dark square domination. My knight's coming in this way. My bishop's coming in this way. I have a pass pawn. Even though technically I'm down by one point, in, all, in reality, it's GG. So I go for this. And now he finds a very, very annoying idea, knight to b3. And he some I get the knight in. He goes here. I give him a check. And this is where he made a mistake. After queen to c1, what move do I have here? Nice cam, thank you. Queen takes b3. Isn't that beautiful? And then you fork, and then you win. That's really nice, isn't it? So, I checked him, and I, and I have this, right? So now he, now he plays king h2. So, now, now, now here, now here the, 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 this is where the, the impulsive overconfident Hans Niemann comes out and in 10 seconds I played the move h3 and you know this is a part of myself as a chess player that um has held me back for my entire career where I make very impulsive decisions sometimes um in winning positions and in Charlotte I did a great job of um controlling that part of myself and being very calm and keeping my emotions together but uh, I let the emotions get to me, and guess how much time my opponent... I had 53 minutes here, and guess how much time my opponent had? He had 9 minutes. And the reason why I was so confident is... It's not like, oh, I'm so much better than this guy, I can take 10 seconds. It was that while it was his move, I was calculating and calculating. And I was like, oh yeah, this makes sense, makes sense. And I was calculating it all, but of course... If I had just taken one, like, 30 extra seconds, I would have been like, holy, I'm such an idiot, Hans. Like, you're throwing this game away. And I would have found 
the very simple idea, just queen f1. Making h3 even stronger, threatening the pawn, and just bringing all the pieces together. And this would have been the slow, calm, appropriate approach. And I would have won the game, I would have beat my second grandmaster of the tournament, and I would have been in first place. But again, this is what's held me back, is my emotions. So, again, I got it under control in Charlotte, and I played great chess. Um, but um, this is just a reminder of, of what, what I need to focus on. Like, I, I, I saw that you really deserve it, thank you. Like, I see this entire idea of queen h3 is just, queen f1, I mean. So, I missed this move, queen d3, and I missed it all together. And that was just really dumb of me. And really disappointed me. I was, I was just very disappointed in myself. For letting that slip. <laughs> Thank you.